Hello friends, you all are welcome to second part of this tutorial that is bubble shot. Uh, if you haven't watched part one of this video, it is recommended to watch it first so that you could understand the basic concepts of bubble shot. In this specific video tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm taking a program in C and just trying to explain the concept of bubble shot to all of you. Okay, so if whenever you will watch the very first part of this uh, video, you will see that what happens in bubble shot that say we are having this array. So we will make a, uh, this program will make a concept of bubbles there and each bubble will compare to the very next element of the array. Say 64 will be compared with 34, then with 25, then 12, then 22, then 11, then 90. And in every iteration, it will try to find it out which element is largest among them. So if you if I simply ask you to write a program to find the largest element in this array, okay, that will be one iteration in that case. In second iteration, this will be uh, this will not be compared, and rest of the array will be compared as well. Again, you will have to write another program to find the largest element from here to here. And in next iteration, you will again have to write a program to find the largest number between this to this. That means in every iteration, we are just finding the largest element first, then the second largest element, then the third largest element and so on. So it is better recommended to watch part one so that you could understand the concept of bubble shot uh, in a quite easy way. And second video that you have to watch is that is recommended in, that, in this case is how we can pass an array to a function. Okay, so both the videos are available there. I just uh, recommend you to just go to the playlist and watch these two videos first before moving to this specific video so you could understand the concept of bubble sort more easily right so let's move to this example we have taken an array arr we are initializing this array with some basic elements with some beginning numbers that we have given and then in next line what i am doing i am calling the bubble short function i am passing two arguments into it one is the name of the array the arr and second is the size of this one. Whenever I will pass ARR, the name of the function, the address of the very first element of this array, that is ARR zeros address will be passed to this function. That means it will jump from here to this bubble shot function. ARR means the address of ARR zero will be copied to this one. And int n will have total number of element that is 10. Next, as I've, I've been told you earlier, just listen this concept that we, how many loops we need to uh use in case of bubble shot we will basically have two loops one outer loop one inner loop outer loop means total number of times we will have to move this and inner loop means for every iteration we will move this loop loop uh, one less than the previous value of say i okay so in the first iteration what i am doing for i equal to zero i is less than equal to n minus one that means from zero to nine this loop will move on okay then internal loop but it will do say we are in this one we are in very first portion then in very first iteration all these elements will be compared okay so from 0 to j is less than n minus i i initially is 0 minus 1 why i am doing n minus i because in first iteration we will get the maximum element here when i will be 0 in next iteration because almost already the largest element is it at, at its correct position we don't need to compare it more so what will happen we will only compare from very beginning till this position okay in this case i will be one so after that we will uh, uh, the second largest element that is 64 will be placed here and then we need to compare only till here so every time whatever the value of i we have we will make a loop less than of that value that's why it is j less than n minus r minus 1 right so what we are doing we are comparing if arr of j in this case arr of j is 64 if 64 is greater than arr of j plus 1 that is 34 so two bubbles will be there 64 and 34 that will be checked if 64 is greater than 34 yes that is true so we will make a simple swap over here this is a normal swapping condition and what will happen both positions will be interchanged that means 64 will be here 34 will be here and then the inner loop will move one more we are working with the inner loop right now j will be one now arr of j is 64 64 will be compared with arr of j plus one that is 25 64 is larger than 25 again there will be a swap performed so 25 will be here 64 will be here and then again 
This will be compared to this one in 64 and 12. 64 is larger. 64 will be here. 12 will be here. And then again 64 with 22. 64 will be here. 64 with 11. 64 will be here. And then 64 with 90. But 90 is larger. So 90 will be at this position. So 90 is larger. So finally we will get 90 at its current position wherever it will be. Okay. So second case what we will do. In second case I will be 1. So I will be in very first position. Again, what will happen? We will start from 0. Okay. This is second iteration. In second iteration, we will start from 0. But this time, we will not compare to this element. We will compare to the very last element to that one. So again, suppose that is 64. 64 with 34. That is larger. Then with 25. Then with 12. Then with 22. Then with 64. So the second largest element will be placed at this position. Okay, and then in next iteration when I will be 3, again we will start from very first element. We will move till here. We will not compare these two elements. Because they are already in their correct position. 64 will be here, 90 will be here. So these are their correct position. We don't need to compare them again. So we don't need to swap their positions. That will optimize the loop in a better way. And uh, we have to iterate the loop less times than of normal one. So we will keep continuing it till i is less than n minus 1 till we do not compare with all the elements means the whole number of times the loop will move move on and we will get finally all the elements in their correct position and then what will happen we will come back to this one the sorted array print array print array function will be called the array that means now array is in sorted order that will be passed over here size will again be passed over here we will make a normal loop starting from 0 less than size and then will print the elements of i and we will get all the sorted array in that specific way so guys in this video what we have discussed we have just taken a program in c and we have discussed that how we can uh, implement bubble short uh, in c programming language so if you have any comments if you have any queries you can ask it in comment section and uh, you all are very much thank you for listening me and for watching this video thank you very much Please like and subscribe for more. Thank you.